1815, Napoleon Bonaparte, the French Emperor, was defeated by the anti-French coalition and was exiled on the island of St. Helena, where he died on May 5th, 1821. However, shortly before he was defeated, he had a choice. Napoleon could cross the Atlantic Ocean and receive asylum in the United States. Enos Morat, a historian, in his book, Napoleon and the American Dream, says that when the Prussian troops approached his home in the suburbs of Paris, Napoleon was reading a book about the geographical and botanical features of the New World. He even came up with the pseudonym Colonel Myron for his American life. In one of the letters, Napoleon wrote that he could hardly imagine his life without an army and an empire, and his only escape would be science. In 1902, the Baltimore American newspaper published an interesting article about a French-American, and once one of the richest men in the United States, Stephen Girard. According to Girard's plan, Napoleon was to board a ship in France and sail to the shores of Virginia. There is also a legend that says that after the defeat at the Battle of Waterloo, Napoleon arrived at the port of Rochefort, where two frigates were waiting for him. However, the exit to the ocean was blocked by the British fleet, so the captains invited the emperor to cast lots. One of the ships will take him to America, while the other one will hold back the British fleet. Of course, the entire crew of the second ship will die, but they were ready for this. Having thought a little, Bonaparte refused, saying the legendary phrase, I can demand that you give your life for France, but I have no right to demand that you give your life for me. But if Napoleon agreed, the modern world could be different than it is now. How would world history have developed? Let's figure it out. Napoleon in the United States. In 1815, Napoleon was still young and healthy, and the first symptoms of the disease that would kill him in 1821 did not appear until 1818. In America, Napoleon would immediately become an outstanding figure. Back in those days, the United States and France were in a close relationship. In 1803, the French sold Louisiana to the Americans for $15 million and the U.S. territory doubled without even fighting. In 1814, the two-year war between the United States and Great Britain came to an end. It was then a minor war for Britain. They were mainly concerned about the war with France. But the escape of Britain's main enemy to the United States escalates the conflict, and after the rejected demands for the extradition of Napoleon, the war enters a new round. The British army engaged in the war with France is being transferred to the United States. Six months later, in 1816, having assembled a huge fleet, the British crossed the ocean and blockaded the ports of the East Coast. The British land forces are under command of the Duke of Wellington, Napoleon's longtime rival. The British land their troops and defeat the American militia. At the same time, British troops cross the border of British Canada and occupy the cities of the northeast of the United States. The British gain their first victories. The United States is at risk of being defeated. British troops, having honed their skills in the Napoleonic Wars, are advancing very quickly towards Washington. Hit by this threat, the Americans decide to involve Napoleon in the defense of their country and designate him as commander-in-chief of the American forces, declare mobilization, and build a fleet to counter the British invasion forces. Against the backdrop of military defeats, the United States faces a political crisis. When Washington was besieged by the British, the capital was transferred to New Orleans. Congress, being under pressure from the military, endows Napoleon as commander-in-chief of the army with extraordinary powers. Bypassing all laws, Bonaparte is now actually heading the country. President Madison, considered the father of the American Constitution, at first prevents the rise of the French commander. But the continued losses of the Americans leaves him no choice. 
America can only be saved by Bonaparte, the military genius. New Orleans becomes the center of resistance to the British. Not only are the headquarters of the army and militia located here, but it's also the place for embarking ships with French volunteers from Europe. In July 1816, British forces seized Washington for the second time in several years. Bonaparte is trying to implement his political ambitions and strengthens his power in the army, appointing his French compatriots to key positions who managed to get to New Orleans, bypassing the naval blockade of the U.S. coast by the British fleet. A large American army, militias, French volunteers, and some Native American tribes are assembled under Napoleon's command. In the spring of 1817, Bonaparte's 40,000 strong army advanced to the north of the country and defeated the British in minor skirmishes near small forts and cities, gradually pushing back and liberating the captured states of the northeast. The first major battle takes place in Kentucky, in which the British forces are devastated. After the Battle of Kentucky, the British army was completely stopped. By the spring of 1817, the British army was greatly weakened for a number of reasons. A year without summer is an unprecedented natural phenomenon in 1816, which leads to severe crop failure, which subsequently leads to a shortage of food for the British army. Recalling the experience of the 1812 military campaign in Russia, Napoleon sends agents to the British positions, where they take over the local militia. The problems of the British are also exacerbated by the fact that they have to spend the winter in territories ravaged by the War of 1812. The diary of one of the participants says, We were forced to weather and endure disasters on the ruins of Washington, which we burned down in the last war. The British leave Washington without fighting. The surrender of Baltimore, the country's largest port, and at the same time the central supply depot for the British Army, becomes a big loss for the British. British troops pull back to Boston, where they are preparing to evacuate the army to Canada and Bermuda. Not willing to lose his advantage, Napoleon pursues the British. On August 11, 1817, a major battle took place near Boston. The forces of the parties are almost equal, but Napoleon was able to take a good strategic position and use artillery at the right moment. The British are defeated, the war ends, and the parties declare a truce. Despite the victory and triumph in the United States, Napoleon still considers himself the French Emperor and intends to regain the throne. Fearing the advancement of Bonaparte and the consolidation of power, President Madison supports Napoleon's desire to return to his homeland and equips a military expeditionary fleet that moors in France in September 1870. What will happen next? Please subscribe to learn more. Do you think everything would go differently? Let us know in the comments down below. If you have any ideas for new videos, share them in the comments. Stay tuned, let's create history together.